Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I am back with, unsurprisingly, another Photoshop tutorial about Discord related content. Now this one, as you could probably tell just from looking at it, is going to be another splash screen. And I'm using the term splash screen and I realized from after I recorded the last video that that actually changed. It's now just called a invite backgrounds. So this is just the invite background that you see when you join a server or when you get an invite to a server, you'd see an image, and that would be the invite background. In this case, this would be a potential image if you chose to use it that you'd see pop up for your server or another server. Now this design, like the other one, is a bit strange, as in it's not something I normally work with, as in a style I work with. I mean, I've done stuff with quote-unquote GFX in the past, but it's been a couple years since I've done that sort of thing. And it's pretty different. Now you can interchange this and add things as you wish. For example, this border right here, you could add a glass overlay to it to give it a bit more emphasis or style. And for this blackish, bluish area here, you could hide these parts to make it a bit more basic. Now it's up to you if you want to do that or not, but everybody has their own preferences. So I'm going to jump right into making this tutorial and keep in mind that, as I mentioned before, you can feel free to switch things around if you like it or dislike it or want to try stuff out. This model you see right here or this design you see right here and this folder or the sorry, this file, this is the one I had to download. Because here I made sure everything was right, it's correct, and when I actually try to make this sort of design or any kind of design live for a video, there's always a few things I screw up or forget to do, and this definitely has everything in it, so this is the one that's going to be available for download, and as always, I'm going to include all of the necessary extras and information on the fonts, all within that same folder. So finally, let's get into the tutorial itself. So as usual, we're going to start out with 1920 by 1080 for this sort of design. It's going to let me click. Yep. And click Create. And we're going to get rid of this background because that will not be necessary. We're going to grab our Paint Bucket tool. And the color we want to be using is 111724. So go ahead and drop that down. And now we have our base area that we're going to be working off from. We'll name this the base area. We'll name this the base. Very unique, I know. I'm great at coming up with all these unique names. And we'll put that off to the side for a quick second. Next step is going to involve making the actual frame that we're going to use for the border. This is the color we're going to be using, 437EF7. We're going to go over to our rectangle tool, and I'm holding this down to make this pop up. We're going to go over to stroke, make sure that's selected, get rid of fill, and 23 pixels should be fine, but we might end up going to 24. Yeah, I'm going to have to bump that up some. It's not thick enough. So control T, and when you drag, make sure you hold shift so you can drag it however you want it, and line it up with the edges just like that. Back to our rectangle tool, and we're going to increase the size of these edges to, let's say, about 30, maybe 30, 32. That should be fine. We're going to control G, and this will be our frame area. Go ahead and rasterize this. I'm gonna go to a new, f a new layer, and we're gonna go ahead and get the other two sections made for this. I'm gonna grab our pen tool, and we're gonna click. Let's say here, and we'll go up about here, and let's say. Go across, down, over, click. Do make selection. I did right click and then make selection. And we're going to do shift F5. 
click color. You have to click it a second time. If it already says color, it's going to default to whatever color you had there before. So make sure you click color again. And this should pop up. And from there, you want to click on this. Hit OK. And then hit OK once again. And now comes the last step. Let's actually go over to the rectangular marquee tool, right click and click deselect. We're going to go back to the rectangle, make a new layer. We're going to get rid of the stroke because that's no longer necessary. We're going to grab the blue and we're going to make a rectangle just like so. It doesn't need to be overly thick because it's going to be merging into here. And we will make sure that's centered and that it's not popping out too far. So that should be fine. Oops. It's a bit too far back. Cool. That should be perfect. And then we want to make sure we rasterize this one as well. Right click rasterize, shift when you're holding the top or when you're on the top layer, click down. We're going to select all the layers and we're going to rasterize, or sorry, merge layers. And this is going to be our frame. And now we've got our initial stuff all set up. And give me a second and I'm going to go ahead and grab all the assets we need. We'll be using to get this black area filled up and then we'll move on to the actual frame itself. Okay, I went ahead and brought in all three of the files we'd need to get this center section done. Well, minus the Discord logo, but we'll get to that in just a moment. I'm going to start out with the star field. Yeah, it's this one right here. Right click, create clipping mask. Granted, the clipping mask doesn't matter, but just to help keep ourselves organized so we know what's going with the base. And the reason the clipping mask doesn't matter for this one besides organization purposes is it's the bottom layer and the frame itself is on top of it so it doesn't matter where it goes it's going to be within the black area that we need regardless so the first thing you want to do is one of the big no-nos of photoshop or in design work is you want to enlarge this now what if it's not obvious already the reason you don't want to do that is it's going to make the image lower quality and depending on what you're working on, that's going to result in a less visually appealing image. But in this case, it's not going to matter a whole lot because you're going to be doing linear dodge add and dropping the opacity of this one. So whatever we did with bumping it up a size, as long as it's not too much. For example, if you had an image that was 1,000 by 2,000, or sorry, 2,000 by 1,000, and you wanted to blow it up to 100,000 by 200,000, well can have a pretty big problem there. That's pretty extreme, but in small cases like this, it's perfectly fine to go ahead and bump that up. So now we've got the linear dodge add-on there. We want to drop the opacity on the star field down to about 45%, and then we want to move it around until we feel we've got it showing how we want it to. So I'm pretty content with that. So we can move on to the next one, which is going to be the spots. So create a clipping mask, and I'm going to go over to Lighten. I'm going to put this in the corner. Actually, I actually need to come back to Starfield. I forgot to do something. So we'll put this in the corner. Just like so. Drop the passy on that as well. Let's go back to Starfield real quick. And we want to use our color replacement tool to just get all these stars to have a shade of blue on them. So just go over. Now in most cases, on most projects, you don't want to go over the same area with the color replacement tool too many times because it's going to lower the quality of it. But in this case, it's already been blown up. Its opacity is dropped way down and it's blending with the backgrounds. So it's not going to be a big deal if it doesn't show up properly. And the reason I'm going over it multiple times is small spots like these don't always switch colors easily so it takes a few tries to get them all swapped over and now you can see that it is all blue the spots themselves are already blue but if you really want to you can go over them again there we go 
let's see. You go right there. And we'll do Control J. Right click, create the clipping mask, Control T. Go over here to the top and do a negative sign in front of it or a minus sign. Check mark and drag that over using Shift so it drags right along that same horizontal axis. And then drop it right there. Now that's corners done, and we're on to our last one, which is the shattered. I don't really know what else to call it. It's a bunch of particles. And create a clipping mask. And first off, we're going to want to organize this in a way that we're going to like. And now we add a color overlay and an outer glow to make it blue. So we're going to start with the outer glow. and this is the settings that you want for it and the blue that I'm using is the same blue right here and then a color overlay it's not what you want you want to use the same blue keep it consistent and then let's actually move it around a little bit more and we're going to drop the opacity on this as well there we go and we're going to do a control J Create clipping mask, control T, hold shift while I'm moving it, and bring it down here. And we're almost done with this section here now. Oops, I almost forgot. Gotta get rid of this line here, that's easy to do. Just highlight over until you're just over the line, and click delete. Back to the marquee tool, right click, deselect, and that little line is gone. Now these last few steps are probably the most tedious because you're going to be making little rectangular shapes and dragging them around to a make a pattern of sorts. So control G, we'll name this the shapes. Now the way that we want to do these is we're going to have both squares and straight lines. So we're going to divide this up into two separate folders. These will be lines and these will be squares. We're going to start off with the squares and we want to make sure we're using that same blue that we're using for the outer area. So I'm holding I which is a shortcut for the eyedrop tool and it's sampling that color just to make sure I have the right one selected. Going back to the rectangle tool we're using that same blue fill and we're going to make a small little rectangle hold shift while you're doing so. I'm sorry, a square. I'm saying a rectangle because the rectangle tool so it confuses me a little bit. And now we have our little square right there. A little bit too big actually. There we go. And we're going to want to drop the opacity on the square to 45. Perfect. And then we're going to be doing these square and move it around into different patterns. A little bit across the bottom and then a little bit across the top. So we'll put one right here. And then we can do Control J. Put one right here. Control J, one right there. Another one. Another one. And maybe one more for the bottom. And we'll highlight all of these, Control G, and name this the bottom right. We'll move this up. And these are the ones we'll place randomly around. These are the only set ones that we're going to have for this center section. We'll name these random. And we can put one right here. Put one right there, maybe one right here. And these other three are a little redundant because that's going to be too many squares and that won't be necessary. So squares are done. Now we're on to straight lines. Same thing, same blue, same opacity drop. Make a nice little line here at that length. Actually, a little bit thinner. Perfect. And I'm going to drop the opacity to about 45 again. 
We'll put one about here. We'll put one about there. And then we'll do another one, Control J, Control T, and hold Shift while you're dragging it to make sure it drags only horizontally and doesn't do this where it does it proportionally. And then that should be good. So we'll put one right here, maybe. And then we'll put one right there. And then just one more thing for this section, and that's going to be the text. So let's hide this real quick, because that won't be necessary anymore. And we're going to move on to the text slot. Control G, we'll name this the text. And then let's make it, say, orange. It's not bad. And this one blue before I forget, just to match the frame. And let's go and drop this down. And the font I'm using is Prestige Demo. Not sure where I got this font from. Might have been from the Pokemon Project games I downloaded. Not quite sure. We're going to go with 165 fonts size and drag it to about here. Next thing is I'm going to grab the Discord logo real quick. Let's go ahead and drag this in. We'll do a color overlay. Oh, I don't think I mentioned what the color was. It's EBE 8E1. So off white, basically. Not quite white, but kind of like it. Tan, I suppose. Discord logo on top. Now, you can do your own logo for your server, but I highly recommend that you pick something that's going to be easily translated to this yellowish color, tannish color, just to help match the overall theme that we have going. And let's get that logo set up. And the last part for this section is we're going to add the little blue corner pieces around this spot. Now normally what I would do is I would have the corner pieces be rounded, but since everything here is either a square or a rectangle, I'm going to stick to that overall theme and not do rounded, but instead have it have sharp edges just like everything else. We'll name this the corners. I'm going to go back to our blue. And let's add one right here. A little bit too thick. A little longer. That should be fine. And we'll do a control J, control T, hold shift as we rotate it, check mark, bring it down here. And that's our corner piece. So we can go ahead and merge shapes. Put this right about now you can do it two ways, either have it just above the text or have it around the entire thing itself. The problem with that is it does look a little funky with the way the score logo is oriented. Control J, Control T. Oops. So I will have to rasterize this. Doesn't really matter, but I thought I could get away without doing that. And drag this to the other corner. Now honestly, you could probably have these be a bit shorter. These are feel a bit chunky. But as I mentioned before, it does look a little bit awkward with having this down here and this up there with the Discord logo just being centered like that. So it's up to you how you want to position it. You can put it like that, or you can do it around the entire thing. I might actually just keep it like so. Cool. Corners, we'll name this the right and this to the left and that essentially wraps up this section over here and now we finally move on to this entire frame and the frame should go a fair bit quicker it is going to take a little bit extra time just because we have to have these little things in there but overall not that big of a deal so give me a second to open up the assets we'll be using Okay, so I've got everything that we will need open up for this. 
our dots, close out of that, and our model. If you're wondering why I'm using an anime character, the theme and idea behind Suke is it's based around anime in Japan, hence why there are so many banners in that style. And I'm not using characters like Solid Snake or from Sekiro or other stuff. Cool, so the first thing I want to do is I want to get this character wrapped up. So I just name this model and I'll actually drag her outside because while she is part of the frame, she intersects both of these. So I want to make that pretty clear. And let's say, make it violet. So image, adjustments, and I almost always do this. I drop the brightness and I up the contrast. This looks better in my opinion. And then I'm going to do a drop shadow. And for this drop shadow, we want to have it pretty far back. Not like that. So up the spread, nope, size a little bit, distance, just like that. And that should be fine. Let's see. Maybe drop the spread actually, and we'll have this at 10. Yeah, that's better. And I always say this in every single video, make sure you uncheck global light. The problem with having global light checked is every shadow that relies on it is gonna switch if you activate global light. So let's say you're messing around with this shadow and you have global light checked, Everything you do with this is going to affect all the shadows in the image. So I highly recommend that you always uncheck that, otherwise you're going to have some problems. And that's not going to be fun. Let's actually move the model over a little bit because we're going to need some of this space here to do that little cutout that you saw. And let's go back to our dots, Control T. Let's move these down to a size that we want to use. Probably make it a bit smaller. Let's say there, Control G. I'm not going to bother with naming these yet. I'm just going to do Control J and drag these over using Shift for the time being, just to get the pattern all laid out. Now there are certainly patterns you can download, and it's much more efficient. But I've been doing it this way with these dots for so long that I've, they've kind of grown on me a bit. Control J, drag this down. Control J, drag this down, and then. I actually shouldn't need a drag anymore, that should be fine. And since we grouped it, we can just do a merge group. Hello there. Did I really mess that up? I did. Oh no. There we go. That was kind of annoying, I thought I hit that perfectly. And actually, I might make these a bit smaller. Cool. No. All right, I got I saw a little line there. I got worried for a second that something else screwed up again. Okay. Control J, drag it down, making sure we line it up properly. Not like that. There we go. Control J, drag it down. Did we spend a solid minute on just this? I think we did. I didn't check. Okay, there we go. Merge group. Create clipping mask because this one actually has to be clipped on, otherwise, it's going to interfere with that center area. And then we're going to do a overlay. I'm going to drop the opacity to, let's say, 28. That should be fine. And now we're going to get to doing a little dots and such, and then we'll do that corner piece. Actually, let's do the corner piece now, get that out the way, and then we'll do the dots and stuff. So let's go and grab the pen tool. And the color that we're going to use is the same one as here. And when we do it, we want to do it based around this character model. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to go down about here. Go down to about here. 
see I'm avoiding the shadow as I go down and then shift click across and then we have the center area all cut out for us make selection okay shift F5 and if we hit OK now with the color it's gonna be this blue color from before so let's swap that by clicking and going over here back to that darkest color hit OK hit OK the cutout is there but not done because we need to add a inner shadow and I'll add a drop shadow to the entire thing in a second I'm gonna do a inner shadow to make it have the appearance of having been cut out there and see that get rid of that nonsense let's see this actually should be pretty fine as is yep I don't really touch distance okay everything should be set up there we'll group this and we'll name this the top left section because I am great at naming things and that's the best name that I came up with control J that bring it up here create clipping mask for those again come back to this all of that create clipping mask and drag it over and actually we should only need one of these spots we can get rid of the other one and that's organize the star field in a way that we like I'm pretty content with that let's grab the spots put those about there I'm actually going to drop the passy on those a bit more alright and now we're on to the final steps here which involve just adding little random shapes to this area over here we're not going to touch anything on this side only going to be doing stuff over here so now that we finish this top left let me go ahead and actually make this blue to match we're going to do one more I'm going to make sure we're underneath that control G we'll name this the decoration control G again and we'll name this squares start out with these and then we'll go from there so squares, we want it to be about this size right here. Actually a bit smaller than that. Cool. So we have that square there and then we can go ahead and move this around one there let's say let's put one up here by the ears let's put one maybe here let's put one maybe right there and one more we can have it right here maybe for actually good measure we can, no that's going to be too much okay and then we're going to do the lines Control G, we're going to do lines. These are going to be about the same as that one, but a little bit thicker. And it's really hard to see the outline for this thing because now it's matching the color of that background section, so it's not showing up well at all. So that is a little too thick. Let's cut that back a bit. Uh, maybe a little bit thinner that should be perfect so we can put one right here and then we can put one down about here I'm gonna do one more or maybe a few more that we're gonna have these are gonna be the small ones make sure you hold shift while you move it to resize it proportionally there we go we can put one of these right here I'm name these small lines we'll put another one of these let's say here and we'll do another one right up here and actually maybe one on top of her head as well Cool. And then it's just two more shapes that we have to make. 
So hide the lines, squares are done. We're gonna do a little arrow. And for the arrow, we're gonna grab one of these squares. And let's see which one did I grab? That one. Grab one of these squares. We're gonna extend it up a little bit. and make it a little bit larger. And then we're gonna grab our pen tool. And then, actually I have to make this one more pixel larger. There we go, just to make sure it's even, so we have a clean top section to it. Let's go up to about here, down to about here. That's not right. Let's actually try that. Perfect. We're just about. And then make selection. And I'm gonna do shift F5, color, darker one. Okay, okay, deselects, rasterize this layer, merge this down. This would be our arrow. This one's gonna go right over here. Hold shift while you rotate it. And put this right in between these two. Not quite in between, but it works. There we go, that's there. And we have one more shape to do, and that's gonna be down here. And I'd like to mention is when you make this banner, you're going to notice that this left side doesn't show up too well. And the way the score is going to cut it for the web version is going to cut it right across this way. So you see this, and actually gonna, it's cut it, going to cut it right about here. So everything that you see here that I'm highlighting with my mouse is what you're going to see in the web version. But then in the desktop version, when you actually join from Discord, app itself, and I think even from mobile, it's going to show the entire frame. So that's why you want to focus on detail everywhere, because everything has a potential to show up. And we put the text and the logo over here, because that's what people are going to see in the web version, and that's what we want to get across the most. Okay, and for the last part, is going to be a little flag at the bottom. So we're going to grab this. Actually, we don't even need that, we'll be fine with the pencil. We'll make a little triangle. Actually, too big. There we go. Make selection. Shift F5. Color is fine. It's already the one we had before. And then we can do deselect. Control J, Control T. Actually, we don't need to do control T. We can just, no, no, we need control T. I got confused for a sec. Control T, flip the width, bring this over, and we have our flag shape. Not the best flag, but get the job done. And we're gonna drag it to about here where it's not overly visible. Actually, we probably should have made it a bit longer. This one is a bit too thin, but that's fine. Because the one you're going to get is anyway from the other one. You can swap it, swap it around yourself to make sure it's correct. Now, first, we're going to do a inner shadow. Fifty-two, zero, twenty-two, and then maybe eight. Perfect. And then a pattern overlay. Perfect. Now it really should have been wider, because if I go back over here, you can see this one's a fair bit wider and it looks better like that. This one, I don't even know what happened to that. It's like the he's a child of the other one. We can call it that. But yeah, it should be wider, so it would take up maybe from here all the way up till here. This one's a bit too thin, but it's fine. And then that's really it for this tutorial, I'm going to have the download, as I mentioned earlier, all on screen. And if you ever want to change the color of the frame or anything else, 
It's really simple, I mean, not for that part, but the frame, you can just swap the color like this. You can do color overlay and make this pink if you really wanted to. And now it's pink, but you have to swap the color for everything else as well, so it's up to you if it's worth the hassle. But I have another video on screen for the other splash screen I made if you want to check that out. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all have an amazing day.